YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Azure Sentinel's threat intelligence platform to hunt for malicious file hashes. So grab that fruity beverage and turn off that movie because you know this one is going to get pretty damn juicy. Hunting malware with Azure Sentinel threat intelligence. So threat intelligence. Organizations around the world are dealing with numerous complexities when they try to ensure a solid foundation of cybersecurity. It has become essential for all organizations to put extra effort in to ensure protection against incoming threats. This is where they spend a considerable amount of time and effort to identify potential threats past and present. To make it easier for organizations to understand, to see this coverage, they can start using threat intelligence. So threat intelligence, which is also known as TI, is important when fighting against adversaries that are linked with numerous security products. So this, that's because it is providing a list of indicators for detecting malicious activities and blocking them. So when you subscribe to one of the TI feeds, you can continue to get knowledge from industry experts. You can even create your own threat indicators from discovered research and then feed that back into the community. So below are the bullet points detailing threat intelligence and what the topics it has to offer. So threat indicators. Threat indicators refer to a list of known or malicious entities, including files, URL, hashes, and IP addresses. Indicators of compromise, or IOCs, refer to the activities and behaviors which represent the sign of a potential breach or an actual breach. You can get them as a paid service or open source service. Alert definitions. So with the combination of IOC and TI, you would then start to develop your own alert definition, which should trigger when there is a threat or compromise. So this will reduce the chance of getting false positives. Malware information sharing product, pro project, sorry, MISP. So this refers to one of the open source threat intelligence platforms, TIP, which is defining a set of standards which can be used for fraud, malware and vulnerability detection. Adversarial tactics, techniques, and common knowledge. Obviously, the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So this is a common knowledge base that offers a list of adversary tactics and techniques gathered from real-world observations. Structured threat information expression. So this is an XML-based language, which is being used to communicate data with related cybersecurity threats in a properly defined format. And then we have trusted automated exchange of indi uh, exchange of indicator information, so TAXI. So this refers to an application layer protocol, which ensures a communication of threat intelligence via HTTP. So with a solution like Azure Sentinel, the most commonly used form of cyber threat intelligence is threat indicators also known as indicators of compromise. This form of threat intelligence is often called tactical threat intelligence because it can be applied to security products and automation in a large scale to detect potential threats to an organization and help protect against them. So in Azure Sentinel, you can use threat indicators to help detect malicious activity observed in your environment and then provide context to security investigators to help you form uh, a response on that decision, which is exactly what we're going to be doing right now. Okay, so for our scenario, we have a test VM, which has a malicious file here. So using PowerShell, we can actually see the file hash of this executable. So you might be wondering, what is a hash? So a hash value or digital signature allows you to compare two sets of data. Hashes are considered consistent and functional because the same input will always create the same output. Therefore, a hash will be different even if a single character in the input is changed. Hashes are computed using specific hashing algorithms. In this case, for this specific uh, executable here, it's been uh, hashed with SHA-256. 
So each hashing algorithm has specific situations that it is well suited for. Often there is a trade-off between speed and security. An algorithm such as MD5 is fast, but with less complex, with less, less complex hash values. On the other hand, SHA-512 generates more complex hashes, but is slower overall. So when an adversary creates a piece of malware, they want to deploy this on a global scale. So they'll create a piece of malware once and the hash will stay the same. So once your cyber threat defenders obtain this hash and implement it into your cyber threat intelligence platform, this will give you better coverage. So let's use PowerShell to grab our hash. So first I'm just going to go right click properties. Just need to copy the path of this desktop. And then we're going to go get file hash. And then I'm just going to paste this in here. And it'll be crypto locker exe and this is our hash so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to mark here whoops i'm not going to do that i'm going to copy this and hopefully that has now copied yes it has excellent okay so i'm going to flick over to the sentinel dashboard now and then we can pop this into our threat intelligence platform Okay, so we're now in the Azure Sentinel dashboard. So here we're going to go over to Threat Intelligence. Now, once we're in Threat Intelligence, we need to go Add New. And then at the type here, we're going to click File, because obviously this is a file. So here, if we, nav if we just hover over the um, I for information, um, you can tell you that, you know, what is acceptable to be added in as a hash. Um, so we're going to add the, the hash value for 256 for that crypto. So if I just click add and then I paste this in, click OK. So here, you know, we've got the SHA-256 and then it's colon and then it's the hash value. So the threat type uh, is going to be malicious activity. Description, uh, crypto mining software. And then we can call this crypto locker. And then for the date, we're going to choose today's date and that's it. And then we'll just click apply. Awesome. So now that's been saved in there, what we need to do now is for us to be able to search successfully across our environment for file hashes, we need to make sure that we can correlate this threat intelligence uh, data for an indicator of compromise along with our log source data. So for detecting our log source data with inside um, our virtual machine, we'll be using Sysmon for this. Okay, so we're in the logs page. Now we need to do the uh, threat indicator data source. And we're going to go where, and then it's active, and then equals equals, and then true. Let me just change this for the past. Uh, hour uh, th sorry 30 minutes um and then we're going to go where and then it'll be uh is not empty and then within this value here is file uh, hash value that's the one okay so we're just going to hit run this now okay awesome so we actually have our uh, hash value here um so next i will be extending uh this because I want to create a new column so I'm going to call this threat intel uh, IOC and then equals file hash value and then I'm going to extend this again and I'm going to call this potential malware and then this is going to obviously be the description okay so let me just fire this off again that's cool awesome so we can see here that the threat uh, intelligence indicator of compromise has obviously picked up our um, hash and it says here potential mining software uh, i should also say the name somewhere it should do crypto mining software okay maybe not anyway um so for our next one what we're going to do is we're actually going to go and uh use sysmon for this uh, now i've actually used uh, this previous method for passing sysmon before because it's uh, kind of a pain in the ass 
Um, so I'm just going to uh, pause the video and paste the query in instead of talking through the entire query. So here's the Sysmon query. Uh, I've done a bit of parsing here. Uh, and then, you know, move some stuff to, to, to make it, you know, um, a little bit more easier to read. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually build on top of this now. So we're going to go uh, where and then uh, key and then it contains and then we're going to go hashes. So we're just going to hit enter on this. So now here we need to do uh, an extend and then we're going to go value. Uh, and then we're going to actually split uh, the values via a comma. So let me just hit this and run. Doo -doo -doo. Yes, there we go. I say, OK, so you can see here um, that it's actually split all the, the hash values up now. So we have MD5 uh, equals and then the hash value and then a comma and then the chart. Uh, 256 equals blah, blah 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 okay so the next step here is to obviously put these in their uh, own columns so let's do move expand awesome okay now we need to again extend the value and then we're gonna split this once more uh, and we're gonna go value again whoops and then this time it's going to be equals. So we want to try and get rid of the equals and the MD5 and the SHA-256, etc. So you can see where we're going with this. Uh, and I'm just going to highlight, grab this real quick, and then pop that here, and then hit enter. Now this should actually um, split everything up. Excellent. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Okay, so it's now split up all of our individual hashes here. So this is going to give us great visibility when we're trying to map our threat intelligence uh, hash value to uh, the actual sysmon uh, hash value. So uh, now that we've done this, I'm actually just going to just do a quick pipe, extend it again, go value. Whoops, I did not want to do that. Value. Oh, Jesus. Value. And then we're going to go equals and then to string and then his value again. And on this. It's taking some time. That's the longest it's ever taken. OK, so that's fine. OK, so we're getting our results now. Uh, we're getting our results from here as well. Um, so the next thing we need to do is actually uh, join these together. So on here, uh, I'm just going to click uh, a new one here. I'm going to go back over here, actually, and I'm going to grab threat intelligence. I'm going to put you at the top and then I'm going to do a pipe and then I'm going to go join and then I'm going to go kind and then equals inner. OK, so here I'm using the join operator, which merges the, the rows of two tables to form a new table by matching values of the specific columns from each table. I'm actually using the kind inner join here. So this contains a row in the output for every combination of matching rows um, from left to right. OK, so I'm just going to do that. And then I need to grab all of this. Copy and paste is your friend. Uh, so let's just bring this down slightly. Uh, OK, and then we've done that. So now I need to close this and then I need to go on and then I'm going to go left uh, dot file hash value and then equals equals dollar right. No, that's left again. Right. And then dot value. OK, but first I actually want to, before we hit that, I want to project some columns. So I want to go time generated. I want to see the potential malware. We did that earlier. I want to obviously see the computer that's infected. I want to see the threat type. I want to see the threat intelligence indicator of compromise. I want to see the value. Uh, I want to see the file hash type as well. Hash type. Uh, and then the actual type. Awesome. So if I just expand this out just a little bit, expand that out again, bring this up. 
Okay, so here we can see the time generated, the potential malware. So it's obviously the crypto mining software which we used. Um, it's actually displaying the P, uh, the computer, the dco1.sentinel.poc. Uh, threat type is malicious activity. But here is obviously you know that the, the golden gates right now. This is this is the juiciness of, of all juicy. So it's actually picked up a hash from our um, threat intelligence that we added in earlier, and obviously it's you know mapped the hash that, that's actually running on the uh, the machine as well, as well as the uh, the type what it is and the file hash algorithm. So all in all, great query, uh, great use of threat intelligence. I highly recommend it. Um, you know you can get a lot of feeds coming through as well, and also you know just just feed out to the community get these get these feeds into your threat intelligence platform you know so uh, microsoft have released the azure sentinel information model or asin so this allows you to easily pass uh, data collection into a normalized format uh, now i actually cover asim in another video uh, but i'll quickly show you the benefits of introducing uh, asim into the mix uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open a new tab here. Um, and then using ASIM, once you've deployed it, you just hit, uh, we're using Sysmon. So the, uh, the process that we're actually using is uh, create. So here we can just hit, hit create. Uh, and then I'm just going to hit enter on this. Oops, let me just. So I'm just going to hit enter on this. And you can see that you know, getting a similar sort of amount of data, but actually once you drill in to the data, um, you've obviously got the uh, original uh, parameter X, uh, XML here, the event data, which, you know, we pass. But then if you scroll down, you actually get more information. So with the with the, uh, the normalization, you know, you can get the process name, the process file, the command line, uh, the current directory, the user, the logon, the actual hash and everything. So without even passing anything at all, I'm already getting this great information. Um, so now I'm gonna just add some extra bits in here, just so we can get our, uh, our hashes data, like what we did earlier. So here I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same split, um, and then I'm gonna do this. So hopefully this should split the hashes because as we just saw then, uh, they, they were comma separated. So yeah, that's brilliant. So I'm just gonna click back in here and then I'm gonna go MV expand and then hashes. Uh, highlight that and run that again. So this should now split that into their retrospective columns. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this now. I'm gonna paste this, replace this with the equal sign hit this, this should now split everything into the columns. Uh, no sign it hasn't, yes, uh, this will now split everything into columns. So let's run this. Awesome. Okay, so you can definitely see that within one, two, three, four lines, including uh, the, the, the top data selection, um, you know, it's, it's drastically reduced our query. So if we just navigate on back onto this one here, you know, we have all of this going on here, you know, the parsing, etc. It, it becomes very complex when you're trying to pass uh, Sysmon. So this new model, which they've introduced here is, is absolutely um, uh, fantastic. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna show you that this does obviously work with original queries as well. So I'm just gonna hop back over to on this one. Uh, I'm just gonna paste this here. And then let me just, I think this is device, device host name. Uh, and then this will be hash is, yeah. So hopefully hit this, oops. Oh, I what have I done? There we go. Let me hit this now. Oh, okay. So this needs to be hashes. That needs to be hashes. Uh, let me do the last hour. Oh, that needs to be hashes as well. Okay, so there's a little bit of work that needs to be done here. Uh, and there you go. So exactly the same query, but it's not, you know, that long anymore. 
So you can definitely see the difference. Uh, there's a lot less syntax written, and it really does take the grunt work out of you for trying to pass a load of data. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your nan. Cheers.